Hi everybody, I'm Luke, and I have a real story that will surprise you and teach you not to get into the situation I found myself in. Because every little joke, even the most harmless, can turn into a huge problem. So, are you ready? Then let's start. I was born into a middle class family. My parents worked their whole life to give me good education. Because of that, I studied in the best school in town. When I finished it, my father sold his shop so I could go to college. That's how I got into one of the country's best universities. I didn't have a lot of money, so you could call me a poor student. Together with other guys and girls from our university, we rented an apartment and lived there. There were quite a lot of people. I had the smallest room in the dormitory, but it was a separate one. The big room was taken by three charming ladies. Jacqueline, Emily, and Marion. The other rooms were inhabited by a couple of other students. Every weekend we had parties in our common lounge. Even though we were not rich, we still had our fun. We all did part-time jobs to earn money. Somebody delivered pizza on a scooter, somebody was a street performer, and I, myself, earned my cup of coffee by doing some simple tasks on my computer. Once, I witnessed a little secret in the evening. I was, like always, surfing the internet, and suddenly heard the cheerful voices of my neighbors behind the wall. What were they doing? I got curious. I slightly opened the door to their room and saw, oh my god, Jacqueline, Emily, and Marion were sitting, each in front of her laptop, and talking to someone. And they were very seductive. They didn't see me. I, on the other hand, were watching them and realized that my neighbors were webcam models. Eh, it's when girls talk to men on the internet and get a small reward from them. I got back to my room. I became curious and registered on the website the girls were working at. Of course, I did it anonymously. My nickname was Well Wisher. I watched my neighbors working, manipulating horny users to send them money. I saw how many men wanted to meet my neighbors in person. They were asking Jacqueline for her phone, Emily for her address, and where she was living, asking Marion where she was studying. Of course, the girls kept their private information secret and didn't tell anybody anything. Just for laughs, I messaged the most active user, telling him that I had Jacqueline's phone number and I could share it for a hundred bucks. To my surprise, he transferred me the money without even thinking. Then I conceived a plan to earn a little money I gave out the phone numbers of my neighbors to a couple of users for a small reward. After an hour, I had a considerable amount of money on my bank account. Earning money that way was so much easier and faster than working on essays, term papers of others. Well, that evening was a mess in our apartments. When my neighbors got calls from strangers, Jacqueline, Emily, and Marion resented that somebody had leaked their personal data, and how now they had to change numbers. I was supporting them, saying how low it was to give out other people's secrets. Meanwhile, I had some easy cash that I earned on my neighbors in my pockets. After a couple of days, we organized a small party in our flat. There were a lot of students from our university. We were talking and having fun. I used the situation to trick my neighbors into telling me their new phone numbers and other personal information I could sell. I was very cautious so they didn't suspect anything. And so the relaxed girls told me a lot of interesting stuff about them. That evening, I earned even more money on their secrets. I became kind of a celebrity on the site they were working at. The rumors about a secret well-wisher spread among the users. I was seen as a guy who could get info on the girls. The next day, a user wrote me a personal message. He said that he adores Emily and asked me to get him some personal info on her. He said he would pay me well. I got what he wanted, and then I saw that he accidentally left a link to his social profiles. I clicked on it, and I was stunned. That was uh, a professor from our university. He was spending time on websites like this one. Furthermore, he had a wife. Well, it seems I got myself some dirt on him, and I needed to use it. Next day, I came to his office and showed him our conversation. When he saw it, he got all pale and scared. He pleaded me not to show it to anybody. I agreed politely, but asked him to help me with my studies so that I didn't have any problems and 
only receive straight A's. The professor, of course, agreed. That way, not only did I begin to earn some easy cash, I also got the possibility to skip class. The life was great. I could afford myself the life's pleasures. But once something happened, a journalist who was writing an article about webcam business for a popular outlet sent me a private message. He wanted to buy Marion's personal information. I, not giving it a lot of thought, sold him everything I knew. The deal was easy and safe, so I instantly forgot about it. The next day, Jacqueline and Emily sounded the alarm. Miriam didn't come home after school. Her phone was turned off. Her friends didn't know where she was and what happened to her. Of course, she could visit somebody or go to her parents, but I was still worried. I remembered how a couple of days ago I leaked all information about her to some journalist. Were these events connected? After another day, Marion was still missing, and her friends started a real panic. I was scared too, because I was involved. Jacqueline and Emily wanted to call the police, but I stopped them. If police came, they'd get on me in a moment. That was not what I wanted. I calmed everybody down and said that I would find their friend myself. I went to the office of the outlet the journalist whom I sold the information on Marion was from. I hoped he could explain where my neighbor was. After getting to the office, I asked to talk to the journalist who was writing an article on webcam business. To my surprise, they told me they didn't have one and they were not going to write a material on that topic. But who was the user posing as a journalist? And why did he need Miriam's secrets? Now I had no doubt that the disappearance was connected to that person. I thought or a bit and realized, oh! It was the professor! How did I not realize it sooner? He liked the younger students. He did that. I had to save Marion. Fast! I decided to tail him. I waited on him to exit the university and followed him. I was convinced he would lead me to Marion. I was tailing him for a very long time, but he simply got home. I saw him hug his wife and getting ready for dinner. What a slimy bastard! He must have sensed me following him and wanted to cover his tracks. Then my phone rang. It was Jacqueline. She said that she couldn't take it anymore, and she and Emily were calling the cops. I asked her to wait again, adding that I was almost done. I couldn't take much longer. If the police came, I would be one of the accused. That's why I just broke into the professor's house and interrupted his dinner. I told him to show me where Marion was, but the professor and his wife were only looking at me, completely surprised. This only made me angrier. I screamed that I knew everything and wouldn't let Professor play a nice guy anymore. I told his wife what he was doing on the webcam website and how he was buying information on one of the students from me. I was waiting for Professor to confess, but he only got angrier. I told him that I would beat the truth out of him. Then suddenly, my phone rang. It was Jacqueline again. She said that Marion was found. She was home. This news flabbergasted me. I was looking at the angry professor, not knowing what to say, so I turned around and ran home. When I got back to our apartments, there was a crowd of students waiting for me in the hall. They screamed, SURPRISE! as soon as they saw me. Everybody was laughing heartily, patting me on the shoulder. What was happening? All three of my neighbors came up to me. They said that they knew who was selling their personal info, that I was well-wisher, so they decided to prank me a little. Thus, I wouldn't do it anymore. Marion went to campus for those two days, and her friends played the story with disappearance. Everybody was laughing, saying that the prank went really well. Except I wasn't laughing at all. This is the whole story. My little trick got me into huge trouble. Of course, I stopped selling my neighbor's secrets. To be honest, it is rather uncomfortable to live in the same apartment now, because what I did was despicable and mean. Also, I got a call from university telling me to visit the professor ASAP. It seems I'm in trouble. What do you think? What will my parents say when they get the news that I got kicked out of the university? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. Maybe I'll get lucky and everything will be fine?